Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I'm so happy to have you here. And today is going to be another get ready with me, but this is not going to be an ordinary get ready with me. It's going to be a story time. Per usual, I will link everything that I use down below as well as a recap at the end. We might talk about some things while I'm applying. For the most part, this is for your entertainment and enjoyment. So let's jump right in. Okay, so a couple of things I want to get out of the way while we start this. Number one, I am severely broken out from the Jillian Dempsey. My skin hated it. This has already healed. It's been a couple of days, so I'll address that in my skin prep, but I wanted to point that out. Jillian Dempsey concealer is a no-go for me, and I actually found that I missed reviewing a, a cheek tint, and I just don't want to put that on my face. So we're not gonna do that. Secondly, we are going to be filming this because, and I'm gonna talk about this as I start to do my skincare. So I'm gonna start off with Fit Glow. And I am going to let that set down just a little bit because I'm gonna go in with a more watery serum, the Tower 28, because these are so hurt, hurty. <laughs> these hurt so bad and they're super itchy, especially these ones around my chin. So this really helps with that. The Tower 28 SOS Intensive Rescue Serum. I would use the spray in place of this, just any hypochlorous acid product. But I have noticed lately that a lot of people are down in the dumps. You know, the news has been heavy and crazy. And another thing that I think doesn't help is anyone who you know, starts to feel a little down in the dumps during the winter. We're kind of in that season where it's winter one day, spring the next. So it's like you get a glimmer of hope and then it's stripped away from you. And also the changes that that has on the body, like the body does not like to be fluctuated in temperature that often, you know, my allergies are kicking off already. So I know it's going to be a rough year for that, but it just feels like everyone's really struggling, myself included. But I will say that in my last video, this is almost out and it squirts so crazy, but it's a very watery serum. Anyway, my last video, I mentioned that I was kind of in like an incubation period and my good friend, I consider her my good friend, Megan, shout out Megan. She's literally been here since day one, I think. She was like, I really like how you put that. And Thinking about it and talking to her about it is a very gentle way to say that like you're kind of in hibernation. You're you're not going to have a high output of productivity. You're kind of just taking that time to go inward, to learn, to maybe plan, not really doing the actions, but kind of like laying the foundation for the actions that will come. And that goes into kind of anyone who uses seasonal planning where it's very common in the winter energy's down, you're in the house, you do a lot of nesting and kind of building foundations for things. But it also ties into a lot with astrology for my chart and us as a collective. It seems like it's kind of been that incubation period. And I wanted to make something that I thought would be a break in all of the craziness because just a side note, this is the last face of this bottle. And you bet your fanny I have a backup and I'm just gonna pour it into my hand. But I wanted to give a break. Taking in bad news like that all of the time is part of it's necessary so that you're, you know, you know what's going on. But I want to make sure everybody understands and is okay with letting themselves take breaks from that. We are not, and this might be a hot take, we're not all put on this earth to be activists if we all were. I don't know whether that would be great or terrible. Do you know what I mean? But there's different people for every type of thing that we need in this world. And it's all about balance. And if something is negatively impacting your mental health to the point where it's hard for you to function on top of the weather and all the other stuff, it's time to maybe take a break and take a step back and know that there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And this is going to be a little break from that because I'm not going to preach to you my opinions on current news, 
but I am holding space for you and saying that I know that it's been difficult. It's been difficult for me too. So let's have some fun and talk about the retrograde of all retrogrades for me personally. I'm going in with phytosurgeons. Before I get into my story, I do want to say I was kind of running low on this. So I was opening this and kind of scraping around and I was like, I'm, I'm getting everything out of here because it's that good. So I went on Amazon and I will link these because I love them and I will tell you why. These spatulas, I know that there's like, there's a very specific makeup spatula company, but I got a, a big pack of these because I'm going to keep some with my makeup, some with my skincare. I'm someone who gets everything out. My friend who I worked with used to laugh at me because I would cut my hand creams open when they were like, you couldn't get it out anymore. But listen, I'm here to use up product. Do you know what I mean? And I love these because you get the spatula side and they're, they're like really flimsy in a good way. They're silicone so that you can like really scrape. But then they also have this other side to them that has a cute little divot to help you like scrape out of even smaller containers. But then they come with different sizes and there's really long ones that I think will be awesome for body lotion. But I did use one of these just to stir up the bottom because the problem was the pump just wasn't getting to the sides where the product was. So I just kind of moved that around and now it pumps up or pumps out perfectly fine. So heck yeah, I want to say these were under $10 for a very large pack of them. And I think that they'll be worth it with the amount of product that I'm able to scrape. Do you know? But let's get into the story. So... <laughs> A little context, because as I've said before, context is important. That's why I like long form content. Context is everything. So if you're not new here, you know that I love astrology. I look to astrology for guidance and self-awareness and all of that. Totally fine if you don't like it. This will still be entertaining for you regardless, hopefully. I have always been into astrology and it really picked up probably in high school, college, but it was more so like knowing my sun sign and all of that and defending astrology to all the naysayers and, you know, kind of like the basics of astrology. And then the last few years, probably since 2017, I've really kind of dug in and tried to learn as much as I could, like what my own chart was about. I started there. I started reading other people's charts and then I started getting more educational books on how to read charts, what different transit means. And then I got into some astrologers here on YouTube, Instagram, and um, Chani Nicholas, who I've talked about a lot on here. And I'm currently trying to dedicate a little bit of time each day to like learning about astrology. And I just love it. And this story is going to be the moment where it like really hit me that maybe there's something to it. And we're going to take a break because I need to let this sink in. I need to go pick out the foundation because I just realized I didn't do that. And we'll be back and I will set the scene. I also really hope you can't hear my husband chatting. While I'm letting this sink in and applying my SPF, which is the Live Tinted Hue Guard, which I'm also running low on, I just want to let you know that I've been filming some of the stuff that I've been doing. So just to quickly address, I am behind in filming and uploading and I'm going to up or film a couple of things right now, but it's because I've been in that incubation period. I've been setting my environment. So we can talk about that in another video, but I've been filming chunks of it and we'll see if I can string that footage together in a cohesive way. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's set the, say, the stage. I know this won't break me out, so that's what we're going to go with today. It was 20, what did I say? 2018. No, 2019, sorry. It was 2019. I was living in the city in an apartment with my husband. We had just married the fall before, and it was springtime, I believe. It was either spring or fall, one of the transitional seasons, because there was a lot of rain, which is going to play in to this story. At the time, again, a lot of context in this story because context is important. 
At the time, I was working for a technology company. It was the only other job outside of my current job that wasn't with a retail company. And I liked it. It was definitely a very major stepping stone in my career to get more into the technology side of things, but it was very stressful because I was contracting, so I wasn't a full-time employee, and when you're contracting, you're kind of at will. Every job, I think, is considered to be employed at will, meaning they can fire you for whenever they want within the bounds of the law. And so it was stressful. And one thing that was very frustrating is that I had kind of been almost led on by my management at this company to say, like, we're going to hire you, we're not going to hire you, whichever. And it just made life very frustrating for me because I felt like I had no future path. I was just kind of like worn down and really needed a break from the universe pretty much (laughs) because leading up to this, and we've talked about this on my channel, well, might have to adjust the lighting. We've talked about this on my channel. The years leading up to my wedding were very intense years. I had lost a friend to addiction. I had moved to a different state, started a new job, moved in with my husband, who was the first spouse I'd ever lived with, and also we got married. It was a lot. And even in that time, there was more things going on with my health and my career. But that's to set the stage. I was just at a very point in my life where I was just tired. She was tired, y'all. She was fed up a little bit. She was frustrated. And on top of that, I am not someone who loves to live in the city. I grew up in a very, very small town in West Virginia. And I always longed to be a city gal. But every opportunity that I've had living in the city was just very evident that it's like, I like the woods, I like the animals, I like having a yard, I like being able to drive sometimes to clear my mind, and all those things are not conducive to living in the city. So on top of that, I was already kind of just like over the city at this point, especially the area that we were in. I won't share that because it's the internet, but anyway... (laughs) My commute to this job, on top of all the other things, was only meant to be like 30, maybe 35 minutes distance-wise in the car. But if you have lived in Pittsburgh or visited Pittsburgh, you know that the traffic gets absolutely insane here because we are built into the side of mountains and also around three rivers. So... There's a lot of tunnels, there's a lot of bridges, and traffic really builds up in those areas. So my commute bordered on two hours a day sometimes because the only way into the part of the city that I lived from where I was working was through one of the major tunnels to the city. If you know, you know. And I even adjusted my schedule to working 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. most days so that I could avoid as much traffic as possible and that changed my commute to like an hour and a half in the evenings and maybe about an hour in the morning. So really I was in the car or at work from the hours of 6 o'clock until 5.30 <laughs> and they were long days because obviously I'm getting up earlier than that to get ready And when you get home, you have dinner and all of that. It was just, the schedule wasn't working for me either. Like I said, she was tired. She was very, very tired. (laughs) And this particular day, I was at work late, I believe. Because I remember when I got home, it was very late. So late that there were no parking spots for me in my apartment because it was permit parking and they gave out too many passes. So if you got there late enough or for whatever reason, the lots were full, you had to do street parking, which is fine. We were in the city. There's plenty around us to be had. So I find my parking spot. Mind you, this is literally in the middle of a mercury retrograde, hence retrograde of all retrogrades. Now, 
the rain had kind of stopped. So it was like maybe sprinkling, but everything was wet. And at the time, I'm trying to think of the bag I was carrying. This is still like, I feel like just in the last year, I've come come out of the more delusional, like style over functionality. I'm no longer that way. It was like this tote that was too small but it was cute and I couldn't find one that was big enough that wasn't expensive. But anyway, it's important, I promise, to the story because everything would just be crammed in. And sometimes I would even have to carry my laptop outside of that bag because it just didn't fit. So I'm in my car, I've parked along the curb with the driver's side facing the street, the passenger side facing the sidewalk. And listen, I was tired. It was the end of a very long day. It was dark. It had rained. And I I can't remember why I was so late. Either I worked late or I had errands after work, but it was very late. Like I want to say like eight or nine o'clock at least. And I got out of the car with all of my work stuff in my passenger seat. I'm curious if any of you know where this is going. And (laughs) when I got out of the car, I walked around to the passenger side so that I could grab, you know, my tote and all my belongings because in the bag were everything. It was basically my purse and my laptop bag, essentially. So I open the door and my bag must have been leaned up against the inside of the car door because as soon as I opened the door, everything spilled. And I know that you're gasping, but, or maybe you're not because you're in the dark as I was at this moment in time, meaning that, was it an inconvenience for me? Sure. Absolutely. Had to gather all that stuff up. Inconvenience for sure. But what I didn't know is that I had parked over top of a six foot storm drain, not even six foot. I think it was a 12 foot because that it's not the length, it's the depth. So I had parked over like a nine to 12 foot storm drain, which was probably about three feet long, two feet wide. I didn't know that. I wasn't paying attention. I was tired. She was very tired. And at first I didn't notice this because A lot of my stuff had kind of just fallen in beneath, you know, the seat and the floor on that side, like in between the door beneath the seat and the floor. So I'm gathering my stuff up. I kind of buried the lead with that, but I I was gathering my stuff up and I couldn't find the three most important things in my bag. And I'm going to tell you all the things that were in my bag so you can understand how bizarre this experience was. So in my little work bag, I had my notebook because I'm a list keeper. I love to do lists, especially at work. They keep me on track. I also had plenty of pens, pencils, and highlighters because while keeping those lists, they must be pretty you know, then also I had bits and bobs, you know, like your little makeup bag, things that you keep it in your purse to freshen up throughout the day. And then what else I had was my fairly new first generation AirPods that were a gift from my husband. I also had my iPhone because I didn't have the thing that sticks it to your air vent yet. So I had thrown it in my bag before I got out of my car. And also my work laptop. And I'm lying. We got to back up. I was not at that technology company. I had just started a new job at a retailer. Oh my gosh, this changes everything. Yes, okay, okay, it's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. And I, I do want to note that I have credible witnesses that we'll get into in the story, but I also shared this with people almost immediately after it happened, and they will back me up on this. So I just started at a a new retail company, and that's going to come into play at at the end of the story. 
So I was tired and broke down from all of that stuff, but also I was like dealing with the stress of a new job. Okay, yeah, we're setting the stage. So anyway, I only remember that because of the laptop and what happened afterwards. But anyway, knowing all of this, I'm sure you have deduced, or maybe you have not, but the literal only items that fell into that storm drain that day were my AirPods, my cell phone, and my work laptop. Joy. What a joy. I couldn't, I'm not even kidding, like not a pen nor pencil had fallen. I had gathered the rest of it up. The car caught the rest of this. The three most important things? No, why would it do that? Why would it protect the most expensive, also important belongings in that bag? No, nothing I could easily replace, chalk it up to a bad experience and go to bed that night. No, I was hot mess. So I don't start crying yet. I call my husband. I tell him what's going on. We decide maybe I need to call the city water folk or who try to find the fire department, whoever try to find some way that they can like let us legally lift the cover of the drain. Mind you, the cover of the drain is probably like hundreds of pounds anyway. So me nor me and my husband would be able to get that up. And it had already rained. It was currently not raining, but I knew that my time was very limited to get this out. So I do pretty much what I think they would do in the movies, which is call around. I call the fire department. I call the city water folks. They're like, not our problem, which I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, they should have. No, I totally understand. It was not their problem. It was just an unfortunate event. Do you know what I mean? However, no help was to be found. They said the best they could do was come by at like six, seven in the morning and try to help out, which at that point, everything would have just been like, leave it in there. Too. I mean, not for the environment, but like for the purpose of like, it's not going to work after tonight's rain. So at this point, it's probably like 930, 945. It's creeping into the late night, do you know? And it's dark. All we have are the street lights. So my husband comes down and we are just trying to figure out what the heck are we going to do? Because the work laptop, okay, I know work can replace that. The iPhone, at the time, I did not have the extra cash to purchase a new one, and I didn't have any kind of like insurance on it. The AirPods, I was devastated because I had just received those from him as a gift, and I loved them so much, they literally would get me through like the work day and all of that. <laughs> and so I, I was starting to get a little bit beside myself. I definitely cried after I talked to the people that were like, sorry, <laughs> which again, I understand. So my husband and I start trying to figure out what to do. And I decide that we need to find a long apparatus, which I'll back up here. I started out as like almost a clothing engineer. My mind works just, I'm a problem solver. All of my jobs have been around problem solving. My husband is also um, a civic engineer. So we're just two problem solvers, you know? And I decide we need a long apparatus that we can put like duct tape or something to, to at least try to get my AirPods and my phone out. And my husband, I stand watch, obviously, because don't want anything to happen to it. <laughs> my husband goes into our apartment and he grabs extra curtain rods that we had. And he also brings down one of those... Um, curtain hang back things the hooks that you put into the wall I'll pop a picture up maybe I'll even draw what we made and I think that there might be photo evidence of this so I'll include it if it's available to me so he brings this stuff down he's got I think a couple different kinds of tape duct tape definitely being one of them and he we put the tape to the end of the hook. We tape the hook to the pole and we're down there trying to get things. It's long enough. Okay. So first problem solved. First problem solved. Second, we decide that the tape's not strong enough. Also, it's getting kind of wet and gross from all the leaves and stuff down there. 
So we decide that we need to take another approach and I come up with an idea. Okay, so we're also very limited by the width of the grates uh, being able to like stick our hand in. So we have to have something that we can like at least get it to, if this is the grate, we have to get the object at least to here so that we don't have to like really reach in and grab it because neither one of us fit. I'm telling you, and these things are at the very bottom. You could see them clear as day. I really hope I still have some of those pictures. So the second iteration of this, we decide that we're going to get a bag and some kind of long rope so that if he picks it up even for a second, we can like drop it into the bag. Okay. So he runs up to the apartment. Mind you, we're on like the what third, third floor. No, second floor. It was only two floors, but there were like three things of stairs. So he's like running up and down crazy. And like, honestly, we had a few little spats, but we learned a lot about our, our marriage through this, which I'll get into at the end. But he's running up and down the steps, trying to grab the items that we need. And like at this time, I think I mentioned in my last get ready with me, we had moved from a house into this apartment and all of our Extra things were in storage, so it was really, he was scavenging in the apartment for things that just might happen to work, and we were very limited on resources, okay? And it was late, and he was tired. He had worked all day, so I, I'll never not appreciate him in this story. But anyway, he comes back down, and he has, let me tell you, every time he came back down, it was just like, I love this man more and more because he was always walking down with some kind of like extra large contraption. When he came down the steps with the first contraption of the curtain rods and the curtain hook, oh, it was hard not to laugh, even though it was a very tense moment. But anyway, he comes down and he has an old, or no, yeah, he has a, a bunch of like ethernet cables or like do you know what I mean like wrapped cables that are super long that we weren't using <laughs> thankfully at the time and I had an old airy bag in my car so we we kind of wrap the rope around the handle one handle of that bag so it stayed open taped it and then taped a couple of those wires together so that we could reach the bottom so Another couple failed attempts of picking it up with the tape, I come up with an idea. Since the hook was already on the curtain rod, I and our bag now hits all the way to the bottom of the storm drain, I was like, why don't we try to just like scoop or flip the things in? Because these things are so long, including that rod, that Frankenstein rod, that it can get to the bottom and so can my bag. So we lay, I'm working at this point, <laughs> he's working the stick, I'm working the bag. And both of us are like, you know, up and down and up and down on this thing. We go in with this new plan. You guys, I know this sounds like we solved this fast, but we were out there for at least two hours. <laughs> so we start he starts trying to like flip the items in and I want to say the first thing that we got was my work laptop. We were able, cause that was the easiest to kind of get that hook under and flip it in. It was like a big target down there. So we get that, we get the laptop into the bag. We hoist it up. We're able to get it. We're like super victorious at this point. We're like, nothing can stop us. And we try and try for my phone and we it takes a little bit longer because it's small and I think at one point we even swapped like who was holding what just to give everyone a fair shot and a break when needed and so we get done with that we get the phone but the phone has come out of the case and the thing is is like we're just getting these things up right now I'm not checking them to make sure they work nothing we're just trying to get them out of the storm drain so <laughs> We, we get the phone up, not the case. However, I try to be, I've talked about this and I feel like a lot of you probably are skeptical because of the amount that I purchase, but I really do try to be conscious of the environment and phone cases really irk me 
for a lot of reasons. So at the time I actually had a Pella, I think it, the brand's Pella, um, biodegradable case. <laughs> biodegradable. So like we weren't going to stand there and try to get this case. We were like, that's fine. It can go back into the earth where it came from. I think it was made out of corn or something. So that was good. But next up was the AirPods, which is an even smaller target, which I thought for sure we were not going to be able to get. And I was very sad about it, and I didn't want to believe it. My husband, ugh, I love him so much. My husband was so very patient enough to allow us, not allow us, but to continue to partner with me because it was definitely a two-man job and try with all our might to get those AirPods out. And by golly, we did case and all. And I'll never know. I'll never know how we had that much destiny on our side or fate or luck or whatever you want to call it. So we got everything out. We got everything out. We were exhausted. My husband was so exhausted, he immediately went in, had a beer, and then went to bed. <laughs> Which is just like preach, you know? <laughs> so it's late. I don't think we got done until probably at least midnight. At least midnight. And the next morning, I wake up and go into work normal time. And I'm trying to get anyone to listen to this story because I still am like in just pure disbelief. Because again, like I said, of all the things to fall into that great, it just happened to be those things. And the miracle of it was, I didn't check my computer until I got to work that day. That computer worked. Nothing was wrong with it. It had a couple scuffs on it. Again, my phone totally worked. I think it might have had like a couple scratches on the edge, but not even as much as like the computer did. And my AirPods worked. I, I could not, could not believe the luck in all of this. And no one at work wanted to hear this story, but I shared it with my friends and they were like, this is the most literal interpretation of retrograde I have ever heard. And I was like, right? I will never again be like, people just like to blame it on retrograde. No, I lived it and I came out a survivor and I totally got it. Because again, like, that's crazy. That is so crazy. And for all of those things to work, okay, now we're going to like kind of analyze the story, but that was the story. I hope it brought you some chuckles because when I tell you the level of ridiculousness of it, seeing my husband walk down a city street at night with multiple curtain rods taped together and a hook on the end, I can't not even imagine what people thought. And then to see us both laying on the ground next to a storm drain with like rope and a pole, like both of us. I like there has to be a game that's similar to that I can't think of one but like both of us like together and when I tell you that we were cool calm and collected for the majority of it there were a couple moments where I let it get to me but for the most there's a dog outside okay that's enough be nice lay down okay brb I'm going to try to get through this, but I don't even know what I was saying, Frank. Oh, I can't imagine what people thought. It must have been absolutely bizarre, but it worked. And we, Frankie. Okay, I think we are actually in the clear, but it also taught my husband and I that like we are extremely good partners and the communication that we were able to achieve in somewhat of a high stress situation and like problem solve together was kind of an incredible experience, I have to say. And now when I look back on it, it's so funny to me because like the odds, what I think happened is like retrograde spun that situation up perfectly 
by saying like the only things first of all you're just so happened to go through this park by the drain whatever whatever and on top of that the only things falling in <laughs> the drain are going to be the most important and the most expensive but then what I don't understand is usually retrograde in Mars specifically it really impacts your ability to communicate and the only thing I can think of is that my husband and I, which I'm a Virgo, Aries, Libra, sun, moon, rising, and my husband is a Taurus, Taurus, Cancer. He's a double Taurus with a Cancer. I can't remember if the Cancer is the rising or the moon. I think it might be the rising because that makes a lot of sense. But anyway... I don't know if we just, our charts just happen to align that we would be communicating badly the same way, but it was effective nonetheless. And I cannot believe that we got through that retrograde situation. And also that no one at work cared. If someone came into me, I probably wouldn't believe them. But again, my husband is my main witness who can corroborate this story. And I promise you that if you know him in, per in person, in real life, you can attest to this. My husband is not one to make up a story for someone else's enjoyment. Like, he doesn't care that much. Not in a bad way. He's just a very, like, no muss, no fuss. He wouldn't go out of his way to do something like that. And I just... <laughs> oh. I have talked to my therapist about this plenty of times because there are moments in my life where I feel like weird things are attracted to me like just weird situations that are just baffling and I can share more stories if this was enjoyable <laughs> to you I can also work on my storytelling I was thinking this might be a good idea one to pass on a laugh because I know it's been heavy lately for a lot of people but also a lot of you do mention that you like my voice and I should read books so this is kind of more of a continuous audio of my voice so maybe listen to this when you're sleeping or in the background or whichever when you're trying to unwind but yeah I have held more reverence for mercury retrograde after that because I still can't get over it and it's been what four years wild absolutely wild I also am trying to learn how to story tell and do my makeup because I finished the story before my makeup, but let me know. This is a good point to ask. Let me know if you have had a similar experience where you're like, not for nothing. I get it. Because it's not even to say like, I'm a believer. Believe what you want if you think it's all silly. But like situations where you've gone, maybe there's something to this. <laughs> it was definitely mine. And also, I think if you are new to astrology, a lot of this type of thing, like maybe there's something to this, I think happens every time someone reads their full birth chart, not just their sun sign description, but like their full birth chart. Um, I'll link a few resources. I have a hair on my face. It's driving me nuts. I'll link a, a few resources if you're interested in getting your birth chart and all of that, but I recommend it. It's interesting. Also, it's there's humor in there as well. Self-awareness, be able to laugh at yourself, but wow. I just don't even know how everything worked either. Like, what is that? Because that was like, oh God, like nine foot impact, nine, 12 foot impact. I think it was nine. Because there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> Maybe there is. I'm like thinking, just imagine my husband walking down the street with a 12-foot curtain pole taped together with a hook on the end. People probably thought he was like office rocker. But honestly, the area that we lived in, maybe they weren't as surprised as I'm leading on. It was just... It was too much. Too much. I can't wait to talk about some of these products. So I actually think I ended right at the perfect time. I'm not going to really load up my lashes just because 
allergy season and my eyes are going through it. Truly going through it. I'm going to go in with a uh, Fit Glow Lip Liner in Nude, my very favorite. And I want to try something a little different today, I think. So I'm going to line how I normally would. Like that. And then I'm actually going to take that pencil we used in the last Get Ready With Me, the Makeup Forever Color Artist Color Pencil in Total Taupe. This is 508. And I just want to add like right on the edge and in the corner and then right under the center. And I'm going to blend that with my finger. And I went a little below the lip line because I want to see if that will contour. Is she pouty? I already have a natural shadow there, so it's a little bit more safe than just going in super heavy. And then I've really been enjoying this. I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal. They, I don't think they put the name on this. It's their lipstick lip balm, I think is what they call it. And this is the shade 30 pristine pink. I really enjoy this and I like it because it plays in that pink purple world. I just wish they would do like vanilla or fruity flavoring to this. It's L'Oreal, it's 2023, you know? All right, and I think that that is the look, the story, the whole shebang. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this brought a little lightness to your day. You can laugh at some of the pain and misery that we went through. Even if that sounds sad, I laugh at it all the time. It was just bizarre. That's what it is. Laugh at the bizarreness of it. And don't forget to let me know down below what your aha moment was. If you had one with astrology, with anything really, just something bizarre that made you think like there's some truth to this belief. But also, let's run through some makeup. So you saw me apply my skincare. I do really like incorporating uh, hypochlorous acid with these breakouts. I, If I were to zoom in, the products don't look as nice today. It's because I was using my retinol to try to clear this up, but we'll still go over some of that. I then went in with my uh, Fit Glow before the Tower 28, then C Submerge from Phytosurgence, which is now going to be chatted about in the next video, which is empties. The Vernon Force Field, which I'm getting every last morsel of. Then I went in with the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in Mont Blanc. Definitely getting my use out of it. Now that I've been regularly storing it like this, you can see exactly how much is gone. But I will say I need to check when I bought this because it's starting to separate a little bit. But it's still performing the way that I like it to. So probably in the Sephora, next Sephora sale I'll repurchase. But then I went in with the Rose Ink Hydrating Concealer in LX010, favorite concealer. Brows, I went with the Merit Brow Gel. Where did I put that? There we go. Merit Brow Gel and the Benefit Give Me Brow Plus a Volumizing Fiber Pencil. This one is in 2.5, the Merit Brow Gel in Blonde. I kind of missed this, and if you watched my last video, I could not find this, and part of the clips that I'm filming now of me setting my environment, I found these, and I am now more organized, so you'll be seeing those again. Then on my cheeks, I used the Makeup by Mario Transforming Skin Enhancer and Skin Perfector, both of these, as well as the Beauty Pie Super Gel, or Quick Contour, Quick Color Contour Super Gel, <laughs> excuse me. Mine is in the shade Light. They do have multiple shades of this. Excellent Charlotte Tilbury dupe. Then we also used on the face, Phytosurgeon's Condensate per use. And I wanted to use that because it is that beautiful kind of lavender gray pink blush because of what we used on the eyes, which was, I started out with the, probably the only product I will ever use from Jillian Dempsey, because now I'm afraid after breaking out so badly, it is her Coal Eyeliner, and this is in the shade Deep Burgundy. It's definitely not 
burgundy it's a purple this is like what i would think fig would look like almost a little bit more probably red than the victoria beckham but purple nonetheless i would not call this burgundy love it i started with that as a base and smoked that out and then today we use the hard candy per monochrome shadows and this one is in does it say the colors if i can find it i'll pop it on the screen i i don't know but it's this colorway i am an, i'm obsessed this is like if beauty pie wild violet was turned into a palette meaning like this is very similar to wild violet this is a perfect deep kind of like let me just swatch these like a purpley brown and honestly I think that these have a very like luxury eyeshadow finish especially the mattes they're more kind of like a lightly pigmented satin but they still have impact on the eye and then honestly we might have to grab a couple palettes we'll do a whole video on this but this looks like a very close dupe to either wild violet by beauty pie or potentially that olivia palermo shade which is wild because that shade is so unique but again you have that kind of like taupey purple to blow things out that beautiful wild violet dupe it's it's like a golden taupe, but it has, like, it, it It looks so much like an Olivia Palermo shadow up close. I'll see if I can get it in the camera with, like, gold, purple, and pink reflect, like, multiple different glitters in there. It's gorgeous. And then we have a dusty mid-toned pink and a beautiful shimmer. I'll tell you what I used on my eyes. So I put this over top of that eyeliner to build that depth along the base of my lashes into the outer V. Then we use this mid-tone pink matte all over the lid and up into the crease, and then I blended that out. Then I went all over the lid with the pinky shimmer here, and then I added that beautiful wild violet shade to the outer half of the lid, went back in with that deepest shade just to build the lash line a little bit, and I think it's so pretty. And as I was touching it, especially this one, is very reminiscent of like a Tom Ford feeling eyeshadow. I've never owned those, but I have felt them. It's very, it, it gives me very much that. It gives me very like Tom Ford quad for $3. Crazy. We'll do a whole video on it. Then for lips, we used two pencils that I will always recommend. The Fit Glow Lip Liner and Nude. I love it. It's the perfect shade. However, I bet I can find that shade in this formula, and I really do enjoy this Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. So good. And the L'Oreal Lipstick Lip Balm. I, I really like it. It's a beautiful color, and I have been reaching for it more and more. The last thing I do want to do before we go is... We'll talk about this in another video, but I heard through the grapevine at Chelsea's shout out girl that using a powder puff that's kind of been really viral lately with the Divine Daylight gives a beautiful finish. So we're going to try that. I've never used a velour puff on myself ever. So it does pick it up pretty well. I'm going to press it in. Yeah, this stuff is so crazy. Jason is a genius. And Chelsea heard this tip, I believe, through contacting phytosurgeons because the brush technique wasn't really working for her. So if you're someone who's struggling to get payoff from this product and you have oily skin, I think this might be a really good tip. But even with dry skin, we're going to... I don't know if you can tell, but it tamps down the shine a little bit. But look how blurred the pores are compared to this side crazy crazy I love this tip it also you I mean you only have to go in like a couple of times versus like really digging your brush in there so I love this I love this we're gonna have to do a video all about new products and new techniques but I hope you enjoyed this one today we're gonna jump in to filming the next video and I hopefully will see you in that one as well and don't forget, if you're going through it, you can come through it and 
be better, you know? Everything happens for a reason. It may feel dark, but I am extremely optimistic that mankind as a whole is kind of going through an evolution itself. So if you're in that incubation period too, I'm with you. We're just building the environment that we want for later. So I hope that that's going well for you. Hopefully the sun comes out and stays out soon, and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.